In the beginning scene we see a beautiful girl running away from a man. That girl is Yagmer, later in the movie we get to find out what she's running about. And trust me it's scary. This beautiful love story is presented through a book. A young girl has just been delivered the book. The author is her soon-to-be husband. She is the first one to receive it and get straight to reading as she tells her husband that she will call him when she finishes. It moves on to another scene where we see an anxious man on a plane. He's having some chest pains, but is distracted by a girl talking to a stewardess. She is in panic as she is given a seat next to a window, which she's afraid of. The stewardess seats her next to the man until they find her a new seat. As the ride continues, they experience some turbulence. Yagmer, being afraid, grabs onto the man's arm. She digs her nail so deep into the man's skin that it leaves scars. The turbulence is over and Yagmer relaxes. When Yagmer realizes that she had dug her nails into the man's skin, she starts apologizing and even puts a cute little band-aid on the bruise. The man smiles and says nothing. The stewardess comes to Yagmer and lets her know that a new seat has been found. Yagmer leaves, but stays in the man's mind. We find out that the mysterious man's name is Hazmat. He goes to a house and is has a chat with his brother. We find out that they are going to stay there for a while because they are in danger. They are also hiding from the police. By now you would think that they are criminals, but trust me the truth will shock you. Yagmar is staying with her friend that is a musician. As she's unpacking and finishing a conversation with her father on the phone, she sees her friend eating her sandwich. She tells her friend to spit it out because the sandwich has walnuts in it to which she's allergic to. They end up at the hospital. Yagmer and Hazmat bump into each other and are of course surprised. Hazmat jokes about his wound and doesn't tell Yagmer the truth. After that we see them at a cafe, where Yagmer's friend I miss singing a beautiful song. As they're having a conversation they realize that they have something in common. Both of them don't have a mother. Hazmat is a strict man, he doesn't smile and he keeps his pose the same all the time. He recognizes something in Yagmer that makes him go crazy about her. You can call it a love at first sight type of thing. Yagmer and Hazmat have dinner on a rooftop. Yagmer can't stop laughing because she thought that it would be a more casual date. Like going to eat Lamakan but instead they're on a rooftop. Having a romantic dinner. She had joked about it with her friend Iram. And the thought of her face when she is going to tell her makes her hysterical. Yagmer tries to make Hazmat smile as she lifts his cheeks by her hands. They laughing and having an amazing time. After that dinner Yagmer can be seen with a smile on her face. She was in love and it was evident. As time goes on Yagmer and Hazmat are getting closer and closer. They're falling for each other. Yagmer makes Hazmat softer, and Hazmat makes Yagmer feel at peace. Their love is evident and their souls are intertwined. Yagmer explains her relationship with Hazmat as heaven or hell because it's always extreme with him. One night as they're cuddling Hazmat feels a sharp pain in his chest. Yagmer is clueless about it but tries to help. She heals his wounds as she touches them. We see a flashback, a bloody one. Hazmat is having something pulled out from his chest, which makes us believe that Hazmat was shot. He goes to have a run and Yagmer runs after him. They hug and all their pain goes away. Yagmer had become the cure to all Hazmat's wounds. A scene from the girl reading the book is shown. She is melting by the romance of the couple. Yagmer was helping Hazmat become himself again. Their love was blooming. She loved him and he loved her. Yagmer wants Hazmat to meet her father but she has to meet his mother first. The scene cuts to the boys playing basketball and Yagmer sitting on a bench. Yagmer starts throwing up and that catches Hazmat's attention. As he's making sure she's alright, a car catches his eye. He realizes that he is being followed. Hazmat's brother is talking on the phone with his mom. Here we find out that someone named Hamza is coming to have a chat with Hazmat. Yagmer has been throwing up because she's pregnant. She reveals that to her friend. As she's talking to her, Hazmat's brother Tarek overhears the conversation. He calms Yagmer down and tells her that everything will be alright. Hamza is having a conversation with Hazmat when he receives a text from Tarek saying that Yagmer is pregnant. Hamza had told Hazmat that he could come back home because the rival family had proposed a deal. But he later realizes that Yagmer is the problem to a forever wanted peace between the families. Hamza has a call with the mother who tells him to get rid of her. It is the couple's anniversary. They go to the same place they went last year, on the rooftop. Yagmer gifts Hazmat a watch and he proposes to her. He tells her that when they go back he will have to deal with some business alone at first. But they would be together after some time. Yagmer accepts and she tells him that a surprise will be waiting for him when he comes back. They're both excited and happy. The ring is a beautiful and it really suits Yagmer. When Hazmat goes back to his home, he finds out that he has to marry the rival family's daughter in order to stop the blood feud between them. Yagmer goes back to being a hairdresser. One day, she sees Tarek in the store. He invites her to come with him as he has a surprise for her. He takes her to an old beat-up place and that's when she meets Hamza. He tells her the whole plan and makes her have an abortion. He had arranged a doctor who was going to perform the surgery on her. Luckily, she escapes. The scene from the beginning is clear now as Yagmer is running for her life. She gets hit by a car and that's what saves her from having her baby killed. Tarek tells Hamza that the baby is gone, 
but that is a complete lie. He tells Yagmar to flee because she's in danger, and if she doesn't they'll have Hazmat killed. The two rivalry families sit down for a deal. The request is made and whoever doesn't agree with it should leave. Hazmat stands up to leave and of course all the guns are pointed at him. He makes it clear and says that they should wait for his response. He goes back to get Yagmar, but finds out that Hamza had told her to leave, through his brother. He tries to find her and arrives at Aram's place. When Aram sees that Hazmat's at the door, she and her boyfriend lock Yagmar in a room and take the key. They answer the door and all Hamza wants is to see her. He tries to get through Aram and her boyfriend but he isn't able to. As if what was happening to him wasn't bad enough. His gun falls out of his pocket and as he's going to reach it a police car pulls up on him. He is arrested and later deported from the country but at least Yagmar's safe. She goes back home and is greeted by her father. She's home and she's safe. Hazmat marries his arranged bride Nupelda but doesn't feel anything towards her. Yagmar keeps thinking about the baby and even goes to have an abortion. But she isn't able to go through the process as she can't murder her own child. She reveals to her father that she's pregnant and he doesn't take it well. He doesn't want to speak to her and even tells her that she doesn't have a father anymore. If she wants to raise that kid she could raise it somewhere else. Yagmar's devastated and but doesn't want to give up yet. She will earn her father's approval with time. Time flies but all Yagmar and Hazmat can think about is each other. Yagmar's belly has grown by now and she is expecting to give birth anytime soon. Her father still can't accept the fact that Yagmar's pregnant. He goes to his late wife's grave and asks her for advice. Yagmar tells him that he should accept her as she's carrying his grandchild. Yagmar's water breaks and she has to deliver the baby immediately. The baby is delivered by her father, right there in the graveyard. On the other side we learn that Nupelda wants to have a child with Hazmat too. They have been trying but it seems that Nupelda has a fertility problem. The married couple gets ready for a meeting, that let's just say doesn't go quite as smooth. Nupilda tries to interfere with Hazmat's business and Hazmat doesn't take it well. As they're fighting, Hazmat receives a text from his trusted man that he has found Yagmar. Even though his life isn't well, he's happy that he finally found where Yagmar is. He goes to her house but is heartbroken when Yagmar tells him that she's married. Both Yagmar and Hazmat are devastated and want nothing else but to be with each other, which unfortunately isn't possible. Nupilda finds out about Yagmar and is very jealous, she ends up breaking the watch that Yagmar had given Hazmat because she knew that it was from her. Their lives continue and even though they're both devastated they try to move on. Who would have thought that one day Yagmar and Hazmat would have run into each other in an elevator? I think no one. Hazmat realizes that the surprise Yagmar had talked to him about was her pregnancy, as he sees her child Kemal in the elevator. He makes his presence known as he stops opposite of Yagmar's table. She thinks she's hallucinating and goes to freshen up in the bathroom but is stopped by Hazmat. He begs her to wait for him in her room and tells her that he's not losing her again. Yagmar makes up an excuse and she goes to her room. They're finally alone. Their love never faded. Yagmar tells Hazmat that Kemal is his son and that she hid Kemal. Because Tariq and Hamza had tried to make her get rid of it. Kemal walks into the room. Tears fill up Hazmat's eyes as he sees his son for the first time. He talks to him and finishes the conversation with a hug. Hazmat's heart is full and he cannot lose them ever again. They come up with a plan. They will go far and somewhere safe until Hazmat sorts out the situation. Hazmat calls Hamza and tells him to come to the hotel. Hamza arrives but sees Yagmar and the little boy and realizes that Tarek had lied to him after all. He comes back and plans to run away with his mistress. He packs his bags and grabs all the money from the safe and calls the bank to empty all of his accounts in. As he's trying to run away, his wife is trying to stop him. He ends up pushing her off the stairs. She falls and lies in the blood of her own. He doesn't care for his wife and leaves her to die. Right as he's about to flee, Hazmat stops him. A scream is heard and Hazmat sees his sister lying unconscious on the ground. He takes Hamza to the beach and shoots him. When he comes back to Yagmar and his child he's much stressed. He has a nightmare where Nupelda's brother shoots his son in the head. He wakes up even more afraid. He spends some time with his family but of course everything is cut off. When he receives a call from Nupelda's brother, who tells him that he was going to kill his brother if he doesn't come to them. Hazmat accepts his faith and says goodbye to his family. He arrives there and his brother is freed. He sits opposite of Nupelda as she's begging him to stay with her. Hazmat doesn't want her, he's in love with Yagmar. He asks her, if she shoots him will the blood feud end? She confirms that the feud will only end that way if he doesn't stay with her. Hazmat ends up pulling the trigger on himself. The scene is cut to the girl closing the book while crying. Next we see a wedding. The girl reading the book was the bride but who is the husband you may ask? The husband is the author of the book and he is Kemal. He is the child of one of the most beautiful yet tragic stories. We see an older but still beautiful Yagmar. She imagines the young Hazmat in front of her and gets up to dance with him. The movie ends with Hazmat and Yagmar dancing as their young selves, proving that true love never ends.